Hi everyone, Emma here. I am going to make this bracelet, but I'm going to use different uh, colors. So the idea with this bracelet was to create a, um, using, using the uh, crescent beads. I did um, an organizational video the other day of my two hole beads and came across my crescents and thought it's time to figure out something to do with them. So here we go. So I made this one yesterday. I showed you the beginning of it. So this is the completed bracelet. And it actually, these fold over class, I'm surprised, is kind of not as hard as I thought they would be to put on. So definitely uh, something to think about. So that turned out really nice. So we have these little rosettes on either side of the sandwiched crescent beads and then a diamond connecting each of these components. So let's get started. I am changing it up a bit with the clasps, class just because I don't have a class that matches the color. So I'll show you another technique. This one's super easy. You just attach it to that single bead. Now I, I will say that I wasn't confident in the idea of attaching it to a single bead, um, but I went through it a couple of times through the whole diamond and then around. So hopefully that should hold. I'll keep you posted. And initially I started with just this little set of five beads. Um, it was really kind of fiddly doing this this way so that's why I ended up doing it that way so let's take a look so this here fits my wrist which is five and three quarters so it's about a six inch uh, bracelet not sure what's getting hooked here there we go um, so for this video, I'm going to do one that's going to fit between a seven and a seven and a half inch wrist. And the reason for that is this is going to be a giveaway for Valentine's Day. So you might hear some Valentine's stories. <laughs> so here is our crescent beads. This is going to be the one that's on the inside that's sandwiched. And let me get the color for that one. This is polychrome copper. And you can buy these at bead stores. Um, I don't know that like a store like Hobby Lobby or um, Michael's would have them. It just depends, I guess, on who's buying beads for that store. But these are kind of unique, so you do have to go to a bead store. I got these from Art Beads when they had their uh, dollar bead sale. So I was fortunate to get, um, I got every color that they had that was on sale. So I have a weird assortment of colors and I think I have maybe 10 tubes. So, and we got this second color. Oh, this is called Milky Alexandrite Antique Shimmer and oh my gosh, this is incredible. So I started doing the video earlier and was getting ready to put things together and I had a different color for the um, alternate and I almost ended up putting just these. They're so incredible. They are gorgeous. So that's those guys and this is the class I'm going to use and so both of these sides flip open and these are a bit tight I just bought them and I did find they were a bit tight uh, I will say that if you're looking for these let me know because now I did do an unboxing in Alex. My last AliExpress unboxing has these in it and has the link because um, these prices on these guys vary c 
considerably. So I think I paid $2.20 Canadian for these. And these attach with a pearl or some type of bead. There's two holes there. So this, you're going to need two six millimeter pearls that matches whatever your color is. So this will go like that. And that <laughs> looks amazing. So the holes are hidden. The holes you put through there, you're going to weave through the middle hole, go up and over. I don't know if you can see that. There's a hole there. And over, back down through the other hole through the middle and then out again. So that there, I haven't decided if we're gonna attach those first or at the end. So we'll put these guys aside and you're gonna need your thread. I'm using the dragon thread and uh, in the green and you don't see it, it's really good at concealing. And I'm using Miyuki 11 O's copper. I was looking for some rose gold, but the rose gold didn't really match with these. So just do the copper and see how it turns out. So let's start. Okay, so I, I need to think about this now because this end piece is going to be different. Um, we need our super duos. I'm sorry, I pulled them away. That's like the biggest part of this is your super duos and that's to create the flowers. So these, this one's called matte metallic copper. I'm, I'm looking, I'm thinking there's something missing. It's missing. Oh, these are lovely. There we go. So, I am trying to think. I think we'll start with this diamond shape here and then we'll add we'll go from here through and we'll add the clasp last that way we know it's nice and secure so you're going to take four 11 O's bring it down to the end of your thread and then you're going to tie a knot. And another knot. Like that. Let's make sure it's in there good. Okay, I'm going to cut that little end off. Make sure you cut the right end. I've done that before. So I'm going to move this up so you can see what's going on here. So now you're going to take your needle and you're going to go through a few of your beads to hide that little tail. It's not super important because this is going to be attached to the bead so it'll kind of conceal it anyway. We could actually add our clasp now. Let me as we're going around. Okay. So now we are going to add beads in between this to create a diamond shape. So coming out of this side, let me enlarge this a bit and bring some more light there. So go through the next bead like that. 
So if you know how to do diamond shapes, by all means, you know, go, go have a cup of tea. <laughs> and that's not meant as an insult. There's the next one. And you get it, pull it in so that it kind of pops in between. So you can see the diamond shape starting to create. So we're going to go grab the next bead. Let's see if I can do this so you can see it pop into place. Like that. And then the last one. That. And there you go. It's your diamond shape. So I am going to go around this and come out this side here. So this corner and then the next corner. You could probably go through two beads at once, like that. The um, lighting is a bit off here. It may have been, uh, I was doing some um, private messages, so I had the, cam the lights down so that they wouldn't shine in my eyes. Okay, so now we're going to add our clasp. So we start by adding our um, pearl and uh, somebody also suggested you could put a bead cap here to really embellish it. So let's go through here like that. Bring that down. Then we're going to take our clasp. We're going to go through the right side hole and go through your clasp then go through the left side hole or the upper and lower okay and then this will draw in the pearl I'm just going to leave it loose so you can see what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and go back through the pearl. And it will cinch it in like that. And you don't have to worry about your position of your pearl, I find, or your uh, clasp. I find they kind of roll around on the pearl. so. Now, if you paid attention, you've got your thread on the top side of that first bead. So let's go through the bottom side and then just pull that in again. And hang on to everything and pull your thread through like that. So now this is the opportunity to really reinforce this. We can go through all the diamond again and then come back up and around so I think that's what I'm going to do. You could just go around one bead, that kind of corner bead, but I think I want to make sure this is nice and snug. So I'm going through two beads at once and again this will tighten it as we go so you see how it gets nice and tight. So this is <laughs> We haven't even started the bracelet. This looks amazing. <laughs> what? It's amazing when you have really pretty components. How stunning things are. There. And we're going to go continue around the diamond shape. Try and do this so you can see. And then in through here and 
through those two beads and then we're going to go up and around the pearl and the clasp and then come down and get ready to start the bracelet so let's go up it doesn't really matter which side you go up but just make sure you do opposites as you come through so you can really see the holes now. That is tight. And okay, we're going to have to go through here. Do it on an angle. Through that side hole and down. That. That's pretty. And these are the pearls I got from Butterfly Beads. So you can see why I get so excited over the Butterfly Beads. Like, they just look so lovely. I, I don't know. I don't have enough words to explain how I feel about pearls. And it's funny, I was telling a friend, Linda from Australia, about, she had made a comment about how sweet it is that I get so excited over pearls. So I told her a story, and you guys probably know about this. And they used to have, when I was young, they used to have, like, department stores had these traveling salespeople that would come and they'd set up a, uh, so now we're going to do the, and I will continue my story, so bear with me. Um, we're going to pick up our super duo. So let's take a look at this here. So you know what I'm doing. Um, let's do it this way. So you can see it a bit better. So we are going to pick up the super duos that's going to be attached to this corner bead so we need and we're actually going to pick up our first um, crescent so we're going to pick up one and then a pearl or sorry a seed bead two and then a seed bead three and now we add our and so pay attention to your orientation of your um, crescent because you want the if you look at the crescent it has it's like a little banana so it has a top rounded part and then it's got a lower part that's concave so that the points go down so you want the top part up for this then I'm going to bring everything down then so there's what you have. You have Super Duo, Seed Bead, Super Duo, Seed Bead, Super Duo, and top hole of the crescent. Now we're going to go through the bottom hole of the crescent and we're going to add the Super Duos and Seed Beads to the bottom part. Now I'm just hanging on to mine. It's, it's not that necessary because we will kind of cinch it up. So we're going to go Super Duo, Seed Bead, Super Duo, Seed Bead, and one more Super Duo, like that, and take a look at, go through the opposite side of that corner bead, so this is the corner bead that we strung these through, and it's coming out of the top side, we're going to go through the bottom side. Pull everything in like that. Okay, don't worry that it's all messy. It's uh, it's gonna get straightened out. So I actually am gonna press down. So this this part's a little important because I did try to do these by doing the top parts first, and they just it didn't quite give the effect that I wanted. 
So to get the proper tension for this at the bottom with the crescent, just hold it in your hand like that and just press down. That should be enough. So now I'm going to go through everything on the one side again. Through the seed beads, you can do them one at a time if it's easier. Okay. Okay. And just again, just adjust it onto it with your finger, maybe a bit. That should do it like that. Now we're going to step up. So now we're going to create the peak at the top. So. We're coming out of the bottom super duo here. I still feel like this needs more light. Um, let me see if I can give this a little tip more light. It's that didn't do much. There we go. Oh, that's way too washed out. Let me see if it does this. The um, camera is so wonky. <laughs> now wants to stay super bright. There, that should do it. There. Okay. So, step up, go to the top hole, and we're going to go through all the top holes. Bring your thread through there and then we're going to grab the top holes of the other side of these guys and don't worry if it's too loose on the bottom because we're going to go back down on the bottom and tighten that to what we need the tight so there you go you're going to pull these together and you're going to go through these again so they're at this point they're still pretty loose but that's okay go through this side here Tight. And now I'm going to put a knot to, so I want to keep this tension here. So one, two. And I just uh, hold it because I don't want the new knot to wrap around any of the beads. So now let's go through one side here. There, tighten that. So it kind of hid the knot inside there. Then we're going to go through this one here. Now we're going to step up to these guys, or step down, depending on how you're looking at this. So let's, we're going to go through everything. So we're going through the bottom hole of the Super Duo, through the uh, seed bead, and we're going to go through our little crescent. We're going to add the other two crescents at this point. So I pulled everything tight. So there, this is somewhat what you want it to look like. It's still a bit loose, but we're going to tighten that. So let's take a look at your 
little crescent there and make sure you have the correct orientation because this is where you're going to end up inevitably going through the bottom hole instead of the top hole. So we're coming out of the top hole here. We're going to go into this bottom hole. And through the top hole of this one. Okay. And draw it all in. Position them next to each other like that. There. Now we're going to go through, we're going to step down. So we're coming out of the top hole. We're going to go into the bottom hole and through the super duo and the seed bead. So let's hold that one tight and go through here like that. So I will um, tell you the story once we get going here after we get this first section done. Okay, so then we're going to go through everything again and we're going to tighten this one here. So, through. go through the seed bead that's the corner of the diamond shape. There. And go through. So you can see there's a bit of looseness there, but that's all going to tighten up now. So it's much better to do it a bit loose, I found with this design, and then tighten afterwards because it's hard to work with otherwise. and tighten everything and you can kind of depending how high you want your flower rosettes to go you can squeeze your thing and then create the tension that you need so let's go through this super duo like that and I am tighten that and I'm going to put a knot here. So one, two, and then pull it down and cover it so it doesn't hop onto things like other beads. Tighten and go through your crescents like that. Now we're going to add the other side on. The other side's a little easier. This is going to be amazing. What? Somebody's going to get a very nice bracelet. Okay, so this one's, this step's pretty simple. We're going to pick up six super duos with a seed bead in between each. So super duo, seed bead, super duo, seed bead. So there's three, four, five, seed bead, and number six. Okay. So this is what you have. So you have three and three seed beads through all of them okay we are going to go through your crescents here just like that and again same type of loosey-goosey tension I'm just going to draw this down a bit because getting out of frame okay so just kind of loosey-goosey. We are going to go step up, so from that hole to this hole, and 
not to worry, you will not see that thread. Yeah, I can barely see that thread. Okay, so this is what we have. And actually, I'm going to come back out of this seed bead because I think we will pop our super duos up. So we are in the bottom hole of this one. So let's go to the top hole. And that changes our direction as well. Now go through all the top holes of the super duos. Go through. Like that. And And pull them in. Just pull them in. And you want them up a bit, but that will tighten when we tighten the bottom one again. So we're going to go through everything again. Of the top holes, that is. Okay. Uh, yeah, you might have to do two seed uh, super duos at a time because your needle doesn't like bending that third way around. Now, let's bring it a little bit tight there. Now I'm going to create a knot here. Like this. And one, two, pull it down, draw it through, and tighten. I'm going to go through the one bead. There. Actually, I'm going to go all the way around, I think, one more time. Like and through here. Oops. Okay, so now we're going to go through this one. And we're going to use this one to step down and go around and tighten the bottom half. So coming out of that hole, we're going to go into this hole through the seed bead. And a little tug. And we're going to go through everything at the bottom section. Super Duo seed bead. Super Duo Seed Bead and keep going. Super Duo Seed Bead and Super Duo. So now we can go through our crescents because we're going to get that little flower at the base tight. So I want that to pop up like that. There. So there's your first unit. Okay. So let's come around. 
be able to put the knot on this side. Let me get the needle in here, bring it around, and nice and tight there. Cross over back into these guys. Now we're going to add our connection. So we're going to bring our needle to this bead here. So let's go through this super duo and through that seat bead like that. And at any point, like once you've finished your bracelet, like I'm feeling like this one's a bit kind of jiggly, um, I would take some thread and go through it and tighten it the way I want it because this one's perfect, but that's amazing. Okay, so now to create that diamond shape as we did before, we're going to add four beads like that. We're coming out at the bottom, so we're going to go in through the top of that single seed bead. Like that. And you, when you're connected this way, you always go up to the next bead first. Just to let you know, when I was learning this, I would forget that and add a bead in there and then wonder why my diamond looked weird. So now we're going to start adding a bead in between each of these beads. So one here, like that, and tighten that a bit. Add a bead. And you see how it's just kind of loose there? Just Pull it a bit and it pops it into place. And then we need one more in between these two. And I'm going to go through the two beads here. And there's your connection. So now we can start with bringing our thread up to here so we can start our next set. So let's just pass through each of the beads of the diamond on the one side. Like that. Okay, so that is what we have so far. Like I said, that one looks really nice. This one a little bit kind of needs some work. So um, yeah, I would just go back in and uh, adjust that one. So to start our new connection, we need a super duo, a seed bead, super duo, a seed bead, super duo, and our first crescent so let's draw those down. So this is what you need. Okay. Then we take our crescent and position it. So we want the, the up part of the banana, this part here. So that is your top hole. So just pick that up and draw it down with the rest of the beads. Like that. Because now we're going to go through, we're going to step down, so we go from the top hole to the bottom hole. Like that. Just hang on to that. And now we need three more super duos. So, a super duo, 
a seed bead super deal seed bead and super deal so that is what you need for that side bring those down then you're going to go through this 11-0 that's your corner of your diamond like that and we'll leave it a bit loose so that we can do our top part so I'm just going to turn this so I can show you we're going to go through everything again so we're going to go through the bottom holes the seed beads the crescent all the way around so you could probably do it in one go like that now I'm going to turn this so you see I have left some tension or some looseness there Again, it will will readjust it at the end, but it's best to have it a bit loose so that you can get your super duos in the correct position. Get through like that. There. And loosen that a bit. There. So now what we can do is we're going to go from the bottom hole to the top hole. Loosen a bit and I'm going to hang on to this part. So now I'm going to go through all the top holes of the super duos. So through this one, in the order that they are on the bracelet. I'm not sure what it would look like if you crisscrossed it. And we want them to go up. So you noticed it, they, these were going to go down. You want these to go up. So just kind of scooch them up with your finger and grab this one. Ah, there's... A super duo without a okay I'm gonna see if I can make a hole sometimes it's just the there that went through just a piece of the beads gets stuck in the hole you really when you're working with two hole beads you really should check your holes and I used to but then <laughs> then I got lazy so these need to go up there like that and go through the next again try and get them in the kind of flower position Let's see if we can there so I'm just kind of pressing them with my finger and pulling on the thread to get it in that position. So let me see if I can put a knot here. And the knot will help keep the position that I want. So I'm wrapping my thread twice around, drawing it next to my needle. And that should create the knot right where I want it. If it doesn't, don't freak out. It's going to get hidden anyway. So. Go through, and this is where you can pop your knot into your hole. So let's go through here. And we're going to go through the next three, and then we're going to step down and tighten our flower through these three, like that, and this 
just play with it a bit and go down. So step down like that. So from the top hole to the bottom hole, and then we're going to go all the way around the super duos, the seed beads, all the way around. And we're going to increase the tension here because this is how we're going to shape our flower. So you see there's some looseness there. This is, we want to get that nice and snug. It doesn't take much. Okay. Go through everything. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'll explain. Um, like I said, I don't do a lot of uh, straight up polished tutorials. So sometimes I think maybe you've understood, but it's hard to know. So if I'm missing explaining something, let me know. So there is that side. So now so we've created that side here, over here. So now we're going to do this section here. And that's what it looks like on the back. So we're going to pick up our crescents. So we need our middle, our middle banana and our outer banana, our banana peel. How's that? So you're going to go through, you're coming out of this top hole. You're going to go through this top hole in this top hole and let's see what I, there we go so you can see it can get confusing easily so there's that guy so now this part is pretty straightforward we're going to add six super duos we're going to put seed beads in between each so because we have this our crescents here we don't need one at the beginning and we don't need one at the end if you just look how we have it on the other side so we pick up our first super duo an 11 copper seed bead super duo seed bead super duo seed bead, super duo, and this is the time you can check your holes too. Super duo, so you see why I don't check them. It just, it's that extra second, right? <laughs> How bad is that? So this is what you need on there. There's six with the seed beads and your two crescents. So now you're going to go to the bottom holes of the crescents and it's going to create a loop, which is your flower. So just like this, go through and you can like pull that out and get it in the right spot here. Threads. Okay, so again, on this side, because we don't want this to be too tight, and what you can do is pop your super duos forward, and that should give you an idea of what the tension is going to be. So, there, like that. So now come back around. And I'm going through all three of these crescents. And you can go through as many beads as you want. Like that. And like that. 
I'm actually going to step up on this one and go around. So we're going to go from the bottom one to the top one and then go through all of these top holes of the super duos. Bring them forward. And go through these two. Like that. And go through the next two. and go through these guys again and then I'm going to draw it tight and see if we can get our flower happening here a knot in here because that's kind of where I want those guys like that I'm gonna hang on to my thread there grab hold of this thread and wrap it pull it down okay like that go through so I can tuck my not in through the beads like that. I'm gonna step down and go through all the bottom ones, including the crescents like that. And we're gonna secure tension on the crescent ones. So go up through the crescent here, through here, and through your super duo. And go So now I think what I'm going to do is create a knot here and then snug it inside and then we're going to go through this seed bead and put our diamond. But this is turning out so nice. So thank you everyone for joining me. This has been so much fun. And I don't know what I'd be doing right now because... Jen and I don't have any family, like my sister's in Toronto, and my nieces are in Toronto, and uh, the gyms are super busy now, so we normally spend a lot of time in the gym and the pool, but it's really busy. I think the um, New Year's resolution started late this year, so... <laughs> We noticed the gym in January was empty and the, the pool. So we basically had, I was swimming in the pool by myself. I was the only person in the pool. So now all the swims are booked. Because we, we're still under a certain restriction. So we can only have two people per lane. So the, um, you have to book a lane swim. And we have eight lanes, so we only have um, 16 spots for each swim. It's every hour, so it's not too bad. We're still getting in. It's just uh, we don't usually, the pool's not usually that full, but I guess other people are bored too. So Okay, so we're going to start the diamond. I'm going to explain this diamond again, and um, and then I will continue with the bracelet. 
to see how many units we have to do here. So, so that means three more. You know what? I think what I might do is um, finish it. You'll see it in the display because um, we're already at an hour. I think what I showed you so far is good. So here's the thing. What I might do is I might continue so I can tell you the story of the pearls and also my experience with Valentine's Day. So if you're just totally interested in this tutorial, by all means, this is pretty much it. You basically do the same on the end for the other side of the clasp with your pearl. And um, yeah, so... I'll, I'll say right now um, to participate in the giveaway to win this bracelet um, just if you could let me know where you're from that helps me for shipping so I have an idea and I it also helps me to know who I'm talking to <laughs> and if there's any um, any interesting story on Valentine's Day for you so that would be so cool but again you don't have to give that information you can just say great tutorial or lovely bracelet whatever and you will be entered to win now this uh, bracelet I will I will post it um, this evening or soon and then um, I will do the drawing tomorrow on Valentine's Day so normally I leave them for about five days to a week but I think this time I'm gonna do it quick so I apologize if you miss this um, there's plenty of giveaways coming up so don't worry um, yeah we'll see who else was bored on a Sunday afternoon so let's go ahead with the diamond so you're coming out of your seed bead that's in line you're gonna go you're gonna pick up four 11 O's and then you're gonna go through the top of that seed bead and just the seed bead creating a loop of your beads so let me bring that closer to you like that and like I said before you always go through the first one without adding anything and pull it nice and snug. So we're going to add a seed bead in between each of these to create our diamond pattern. Like that. And you can go through both seed beads now that you've got your last one on. Like that. And it's tight. Now we're going to bring it, bring our thread up, go through these two, and then the next two. And we're ready to start all over. So there it is. So I'm, I'm just going to continue. Um, and talk while I do this so if uh, if you're not interested in that by all means forward to the end um, not sure if I'll get the whole thing done but we'll try so let me grab the three so the story I was talking about pearls the reason why I love pearls so much when I was growing up it was popular to have um, the the kind of preppy look which was so that was this was when I was a teenager so that would be 1980 and um, the look was like kind of pastel colors um, big puffy kind of like um, sweatshirt tops but a little nicer looking 
and um, pearls. So that was the style. And of course, my mom having nine kids couldn't afford, we couldn't afford any of that. And, I, you know, I think I may have kind of been annoyed with it, but I wasn't, it wasn't like major, like I wasn't, you know, bugging my mom for stuff or whatever. So anyway, we were shopping one day in a department store and this is when in the, the department stores would have these sales reps come in to demonstrate different products. So it was kind of like an infomercial and you know, like the, um, the mandolin that cuts all the different vegetables and stuff like that. So they do these demos and then they would say, if you listen to the demo to the end, you'll get a ticket for a draw to win a set of pearls. And it wasn't always a set of pearls, but just happened. This one we were in the store for was a set of pearls. So, um, so we watched and stuff and I don't know why they did it this way, but they, they would tell you that they would call your name over the PA afterwards. I think what it is, is they had one set of pearls for like a bunch of different demonstrations. So if you were still in the store and your name got called, then you won. Otherwise it would go to the next ticket holder, I guess, or they just wouldn't give it away. I don't know. Anyway, so we're, we watched this thing and I don't know. I, th I think only my mom got a ticket. You had to be an adult. So <laughs> they're so sneaky. You had to be an adult because of course only an adult would buy something, right? Back then anyway. So yeah, that was funny. So anyway, we're going through the store and they, over the PA, they announced my mother's name. So we go and get the set of pearls. And she turns to me and she hands them to me. She goes, here, honey. <laughs> I know you wanted a pair of a set of pearls forever. I couldn't believe it. I was like, and you know what? I have no idea about those pearls. If they were cultured pearls fresh water, um, glass, whatever. But you know what? I didn't care. I was so happy. So, uh, needless to say, I have this affinity for pearls. So that is my story about my pearls. Um, so I was going to mention too about Valentine's. So being a gay person, there's no such thing as Valentine's. At least there wasn't when I was growing up. Um, because you were in the closet. And I was in the closet big time. It didn't take you much to figure out that you had to be in the closet because you would hear things that I'm not going to repeat. But, yeah, not very nice things about gay people. So, um, having said that, nowadays they have what they call Pink Triangle Day. I think that's what it is, Pink Triangle Day. So they, um... It's to step away from the Valentines so that it opens it up to queer people as well. I mean, the idea of showing your affection for someone that you love and giving them gifts and stuff like that and doing special things. It's great. Now, you know, one of the things with Jen and I is we, we do those things year round. And I'm sure a lot of you, even um, straight people do that as well. 
if it's not to single anybody out. But anyway, um, so when I was a teenager, I went to, okay, so grade 9 and 10, I went to a all-girls school. So, which used to crack me up. So the reason why I went to an all-girls school, you get this, I'm sure a lot of you are Catholic out there. Because <laughs> some of the, when I tell my stories about being Catholic, <laughs> people go, oh yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. So, um, my mother's idea was, so here's the thing. We have a private and a Catholic uh, school board in uh in Ontario, so that's in Toronto. I don't know if they have it separate now. So it used to be separate. So um, she thought that if we went to an all-girls school, that we wouldn't get pregnant. <laughs> Nothing like teaching about sex education. No, being Catholic, right? Let's, let's get it straight. So the funny part that I thought always thought was hilarious is that being gay, first of all, I can't get pregnant. Secondly, um, I mean, she should be happy then that I'm gay, right? <laughs> and then sending me to an all-girls school was not punishment. <laughs> so that, that I found kind of funny. Not that I was like perving on my friends at school, because I wasn't. I'm just like anybody else, right? We have boundaries and respect and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, that was too funny. So, anyway, they would do, for Valentine's Day, they would do, um, they would hook up with one of the boys school and the boys could um, pay for a rose and it would be the intention was to send this to one of the girls at the girls school and um, so when you came into our vestibule of the school on Valentine's Day they had it was probably seniors like grade 13 seniors sitting at a table with big buckets of roses long stem roses and um, you would go up to the desk or the table and you would give them your name and they would look it up and they'd say yeah you have a rose and They'd hand you a rose and had a little note attached to it was from or something like that. I don't know. can't remember now. But, um, so I remember, like, going up. <laughs> I was thinking now, why would I even bother going up? I knew there was not going to be roses there for me. <laughs> but maybe I was doing it so that nobody would know that I was gay. Imagine that. So, I, uh, and it was sad too. So, you know, here these girls would be going from class to class carrying their rose, and you didn't have one. So, it was really, in that sense, it was kind of not necessarily traumatic, but I feel like it just added to the crap that you had to deal with in high school now I'll tell you being in an all-girls school I felt like uh, it I would recommend it to anybody because for one everybody wears the same uniform and so I didn't have to worry about having the cool clothes And, uh, yeah, uh, what else? Um, on the first day of school, we made instant friendships. 
that lasted the years. Um, you know, you're kind of in the same thing. So basically whoever either was by your locker or in your homeroom class, like you just made friends quickly. It was like, we're all in this together for the long haul. <laughs> so yeah. But, so that was my experience with Valentine's. I'm trying to think of any time that I got Valentine stuff. Um, I was married to a guy. <laughs> I have to point that out. <laughs> and uh, he was a nurse. I met him in nursing school. And he was really, really smart. So he had a bunch of university degrees and stuff. But the reason I bring this up, he reminded me of the nutty professor. So like he couldn't dress himself. Uh, he just was lost, which made it interesting for nursing. So when we were going through school, he, um, me and the other three girls on our, in our um, study group would crack up at the crap that would come out of his mouth when we were doing the obstetrics rotation. I'm like, are you freaking serious? So the reason I say this is because one year we, um, when we were moving to North Carolina to work, we, um, I did a lot of work to get his mother in her apartment that had assisted living. So she had her own apartment, but then she could call downstairs and there was like a break room and it was all staffed with people attendants that could help her get ready for bed and stuff like that. Cause she had had a stroke, so she needed a lot of care. So I managed to get her into one of these apartments which was you know you end up on a waiting list it's quite a a long thing so I did that for his family and um and then I arranged the moving to North Carolina and I arranged all like the uh emptying of the house and stuff like that so um Anyway, we go to his sister's house for Christmas Eve. We were leaving on Boxing Day. So the truck's loaded, U-Haul's loaded, the whole bit. We go to his sister's for a little dinner and exchanging of gifts. And he, I see him, like, panicked, and he, he gets his sister, and his sister hands him an envelope. So he runs into the bedroom, and then he comes out of the bedroom with this envelope. So I look at the envelope. He had written, I owe you. Didn't even write it out. That's how freaking lazy he was. I dot O dot U dot. I'm like, what are you in fifth grade? <laughs> like, are you serious? And like, it just so happened that it was written on the envelope that it didn't even have the, um, like, I opened the envelope to see if there, I thought it was a joke, to see if there was anything in the envelope. <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> that was one of my experiences with guys and it's, that's why I called him the nutty professor. He was just useless. But, uh, so I learned from that, that, uh, that was still when they were sending catalogs to your home and stuff. So I learned to do some catalog shopping. And what that meant was <laughs> I would pick items and I cut out the sheet or the, the picture from the catalog. And I would put it on the fridge. 
it's like, okay, there's what you're getting me for Christmas this year. So needless to say, I got a sewing machine. <laughs> I got some really nice stuff. A big, huge TV. <laughs> I'm like, you're paying for this one. Okay, I'm going to change my thread here. This is looking amazing. Look at that. So we need three more of these. This could take a while. I don't know how many stories I have. <laughs> so let me clip this. We were um, obstetrics with um, with my ex-husband. So we're studying for obstetrics and I mean, a lot of the information we already know as women, right? So we know about labor and delivery and uh, prenatal care. And not that any of us were pregnant but or had ever been pregnant. But, um, you know, those kind of things you pay attention to because at some point you probably will need to know that information. So I'm just looking, I don't know. So let's, we could actually do it from the other side and then just add the two, but I think I'd rather add it this way. So I'm going to thread my needle. Yeah, so we're, so we used to study every other night together as a study group and we just go to a different person's home each night. And there was me and him and two other people, two other women in there. So I had, because I was really broke, I had purchased a, um, they have these workbooks that you use to study for your um, national exams. And I had um, bought one at like the thrift store, but it was um, it was an old one, and it was really old. Funny enough, like it was probably from the seventies. Yeah, probably from the seventies. So um, anyway, the like some of the answers were kind of stupid. You knew that that was not the right answer. Things had changed enough. And, but believe it or not, the, the obstetric one, I was shocked at how much stuff was different. So, and, and you guys know where this is going, <laughs> I'm sure. So <laughs> one of our teachers had showed us a, um, black and white video of how they used to do deliveries so this video they um they prepped prepped the woman for delivery so they shaved her perineum and then they gave her an enema and then they put her out and that's how they delivered the baby back then well and if it was black and white film so you got to figure that was in the 60s at least early 60s so um anyway uh we're studying from this old book so you can imagine it was the same kind of stupidity and it was multiple choice so you'd ask a question and he would answer <laughs> so i'm trying to think I, so if we were to give, for example, the one, um, how do you prep a woman for delivery? And uh, he starts rhyming off. His first answer was, give her an enema. He's all happy. He got it right. He thinks. So me and the two others were like, really? Are you serious? You idiot. No, they don't do that. 
He's like, well, it says here in the book. I'm like, yeah, it's an old book. So then the next one was, um, he goes, so we ask again, and he says, um, shave the perineum. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? No. We, tried, we just told you. He's like, well, why did they used to do that? We all look at each other like disgusted and we're like, because some male doctor wanted a clean field to deliver a baby in. That's why. It's like, oh, <laughs> I think you realize then I better shut up. Yes. So then we, so part of our job as a post- natal care um, nurses and we're on the uh, the natal unit uh, postpartum unit and we had to so I'm coming from the bottom I'm going to go through the bottom of this crescent this first one so um, you know we had our list of assessments that you do on the woman who's just delivered so and then you do those assessments every day and each day there should be a different stage that they're at so you're checking the fundus which is the uterus you're checking to make sure that it's hard and firm and that it's it's moving up in the area so uh that means that it's contracting properly so you're not going to get any bleeding and that also tells us that there's no tissue left no placental tissue left in the uterus so that it won't cause an infection and bleeding and stuff like that anyway one of the other things you check is breast and that's to make sure that they're not engorged and uh so we, we're going around the unit. We've, we're assigned patients. So we have to go in and introduce ourselves and give them the, hey, we're here to check things. So is that okay? And uh, I go down the hall and I see Richard standing at the door of the patient's room. And if see my hand so when you do the breast assessment you would do something like this on the breast and then check the other one so you're feeling all around kind of in a circle and uh, he's at the door he's not even in the door in the room or even anywhere near the patient and he's going like this with his hands I'm like dude you gotta get a bit closer yeah he was I'm surprised they passed him. So. I'm trying to think why I'm thinking labor and delivery. Oh, I just watched an English show. And I can't remember the name of it. It's it's like a a whole sentence, the name of it. But it's about a young... Well, it's about a doctor that works labor and delivery, and, um, and then it shows all everybody that works labor and delivery and how much stress. So he works with the NHS, which is their healthcare system, and yeah. So I think that's why I was thinking about it lately. I would have been a labor and delivery nurse for sure. I loved it. But the issue with labor and delivery for nurses and jobs is because unlike other nursing positions, you don't do any heavy lifting. So it's it's pretty rare that you have to lift a patient in uh, labor and delivery. They usually walk in. <laughs> So that kind of thing but on other floors you're constantly lifting and turning patients and stuff like that so it's a lot easier on your back so they stay longer so they don't retire like most nurses probably retire 
somewhere in their 50s because it takes a terrible toll on your body. So. Um. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> my, so the, the way it worked with uh, obstetric rotation for clinical is, so we were in clinical for six weeks at a time. So that would be two shifts a week. And then we were in class the rest of the time. So uh, my first, so you, because there were so many students, only, you only got two days of that would be in labor and delivery. So my first day in labor and delivery, I get there and it's me and another student. So the other student was assigned a patient already who was going to have a C-section, C-section. So she was kind of down the hall a bit. Anyway, I get to the floor. The floor is empty. The nurse says to me, she goes, you're not going to see anything here. She goes, we delivered eight babies over the weekend. She says, that's just the way it goes. They all come at the same time. And then nothing. So I was like, oh, okay. So I guess she, I don't know if she suggested it or my teacher may have come around and said, well, you go in with this other student and watch the C-section. And actually, the other student was, she was kind of useless. And you know what, who knows, she's a student, right? So she's learning too. So I am kind of, I don't want to say bossy, but I was really good at, um, taking charge, I guess. So anyway, uh, we had this patient that had a scheduled C-section. Oh, this is not working the way I want it here. I think I need to come out of here. So um, we go in and we watch it. It was incredible. I cannot believe they do what they do for C-sections. Uh, it's a good thing I never got pregnant. <laughs> and, um, so anyway, that was, that was all good. So then when, after she delivered, um, the nurse that was assigned to her told us to go ahead and wash her from head to toe because, um, well, they, first of all, they, um, they put betadine, that brown disinfectant, all over their abdomen. So, and when I say they put it on, they squirt it on with a bottle. <laughs> and then they take a something to, to, you know, rub it in, whatever. So, um, she was covered in every orifice and crack and stuff. But, um... So this girl is like gently washing her hand. <laughs> I was like, um, let me do that. So I gave this lady a bath. She was like, this is the first time ever somebody's given me a bath in bed. And it was like nice and warm. I made sure the water was nice and hot. And I was like, oh, I'm glad you just, <laughs> you just, you just did the hard part. <laughs> We're just goofing around. So uh, so that was fine. I got to see that. So that was day one. Day two, quiet again. And uh, so I don't know if... I'm trying to think what she had me doing the nurse anyway I um sorry I'm I'm trying to bead and think at the same time so a lady came on the unit 
and she walked on. She looked, I mean, she was pregnant for sure. There was no mistake in that. But if she didn't have a belly on her, you would never know she was pregnant. She was like so calm. And she walks on the unit and she hands me some paperwork. She said, I was just upstairs getting my stress test done. And they told me to come here. <laughs> so I'm like, to me, that means nothing. Zippo. I, I did do a rotation on the uh, in the stress test. Uh, I could have easily done a week there. It was amazing what I learned from this nurse. She was incredible. Um, she gave me any tip and hint and stuff like that, how to help the mothers and whatnot and how to get things started and whatnot. So, yeah, it was really, really good experience. But anyway, so I didn't make the connection why she was being sent to us, right? So I, I thought they were just going to monitor her. So the nurse says to me, she goes, okay, I'll show you a trick. So she says, we have to test the, um, test her urine. Let me air quotes, urine. You women know what I'm talking about. You know what's coming next. So we have to test her urine for, um, Oh, I'm trying to think of the word and I just blank here the uh, fluid like when they the um, the fluid in the order is I don't know why I can't remember that word anyway so um, she says <laughs> get some gloves <laughs> And we put her gloves on. The bathroom, she had sent her, the patient to the bathroom. She said, go to the bathroom, see if you can empty your bladder. Like this, right? And then she, uh, she, so we go in and we're both got our gloves on. And she says, okay. And she takes the lid of the garbage can off and she reaches in and she grabs the, the pad, the pad. The sanitary napkin that the patient had and she goes we'll take the the um you know the sticks that you um use to check for ketones when you're diabetic and stuff they used to use them a lot not as much now but anyway it's it's got the different it tells what's in there and um so anyway she takes the napkin she takes this little piece of cardboard with the little pads on it and she folds over the napkin and squeezes it onto the thing and then she says okay let's time that and lo and behold what that told us was that her water broke and so she had put a pad on to to uh get, you know catch the water and uh that was so funny. So anyway, she's like, yep, she's in labor. <laughs> Whoa, where was the eye? I, I didn't know that. Of course, I'm like so quiet now. I'm like, okay, I missed that one. <laughs> I missed that one in that uh, lovely movie they played for us. So I'm just going to add these guys. Pay attention, Emma. Okay, so there's six on this one. And then go through. So then, um, yeah, she starts going into labor. We get her set up in the room and everything. And um, the nurse called the doctor. And in the meantime, I am fully gowned and everything ready to go because guess what somebody's having a baby without a doctor <laughs> so it was so funny when I came in the first day of my clinical and she says yeah you're not going to see anything that went from no babies 
to a C-section and I actually got to give care to the mother and then um, help deliver a baby. So the funny part was this, this other nursing student, I don't know where she was. I think actually she followed that patient through into postpartum. So that's why she wasn't with us because there was nothing really going on anyway, apparently. <laughs> so, um, so she had her nose at a joint because I was delivering a baby. <laughs> I'd be pissed too. Let's let's be honest. So yeah, we that was pretty incredible. We delivered a baby without the doctor there. And I mean I didn't do anything. I was just following instructions. She said this, I did that. <laughs> so um and you know the big joke of you don't actually deliver the baby. The woman delivers the baby. All you do is catch the baby. So <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Um, so we would have post-clinical afterwards to discuss our cases. And uh, I get, and of course, I'm late getting to clinical because, or to post-conference because um, oh, I'm delivering a baby. <laughs> that takes precedence over post-conference. So <laughs> I get to post-conference. I'm waiting for the teacher to, to uh, give me her time. And uh, no, she, I guess, had sent somebody, one of the other students, to come and get me and you know what they do this all the time so they know what could happen right so that person had come back and said she's in the middle of delivering a baby so I come in for post-conference and everybody's there and the teacher I've got like this shit ass grin on my face the teacher says so Emma what did you do today <laughs> I jumped up in the air bouncing and laughing going I helped deliver a baby it was amazing she's laughing she thought that was hilarious she told tells us a story of when she was nursing and of course she was probably nursing in the 70s that they um she was delivered she was a nursing student and what they would do is they would assign you to a doctor so, I mean, you did, and the doctor would direct you in what to do. So, they delivered the first baby. And I say first, they didn't know it was a first <laughs> or a second. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, we have a second one. So, that was her nursing experience. So, she was kind of um, really happy for me that I got that experience and that it was quite an honor and I definitely felt that I find out later she asked me some questions that were in my opinion not related to like clinical experience it was more they seem more like I don't know if she was fishing for information or what but um she was asking me about the episiotomy and the extent of it and whatnot. And um, I had, in the situation, because the doctor wasn't there. So if the doctor's not there, unless they have a good reason, they could be in a lot of trouble for not being there. Um, the way it works here is, yeah, you have your doctor that you're, that you see prenatally but then there's doctors on call in the hospital that deliver in case the other doctor can't make it so anyway the the fact that this doctor uh didn't uh wasn't there and that we delivered was not good 
But uh, anyway, find out. It was her cousin, my nursing teacher's cousin. And there was a severe tear. And uh, so they were trying to figure out what the deal was. But apparently, I think I think the, what it was is she had one previous to this for another delivery. So the, you know, it's, it's pretty common that it would um, make the tear worse, the previous tear. So anyway, that was that. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I can. So I might end up finishing this on my own because uh, I'm running out of stories. <laughs> It's like almost two hours. I, I don't think I've ever done a two hour video and um, I don't know if it's going to load properly. So, this one flowers bugging me a bit. Uh, I'm sure I'll be able to fix it. But So there you go. Happy Valentine's Day folks. Oh I need to go down one. Let me do go through this one. Yeah, I think I had too much tension on the bottom part. And let's go. So, let's see if we can bounce this out a bit. There we go. So there is what I have so far. I need to do two more of these in at the class, but this is, you'll see it in the opening um, part of the video, and that will be what is available for the giveaway for Valentine's Day. So I hope you have a lovely Valentine's Day out there. Jen and I are trying to figure out what to do. I had, um, last week she installed a um, water heater. <laughs> so while she was doing that, I made her some stew and some caramel corn. <laughs> so she says, I feel like I've already got my Valentine's Day gift. <laughs> so I actually wanted to finish her painting, but yeah, we'll get to that. So there you go. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon. Bye.